All right, welcome back to House of a Thousand Parasites. I mean, House of a Thousand Books. <laughs> You're a bit horror book club. Um, where we seem to only like the worms. But mm-hmm. today we are talking about The Troop, which is by Nick Cutter, which is actually a pseudonym. According to this. Yes. Is, is it? According to Brody this, name blew my mind with that. Craig Davidson is the oh. true name. It was easy to find. Well, hold up. Who's at the table? Oh, <laughs> my name is Brody. I'm Gabby. <clears throat> I'm Stephanie, but y'all can call me Steph. Wow. I'm Dan. Uh, new member, Dan, has joined. Yeah. And as always, <laughs> Clubs, clubs, clubs. <laughs> as always my name is steven sj whatever you prefer um and we are your hosts for house of a thousand books this is our july book pick the troop by nick cutter we may or may not be recording this in august but you do not have to know that um they're not gonna see so this Brody, till december <laughs> we're yeah. not posting it until 2024 um <laughs> so brody is gonna start us off with a plagiarized recap of events <laughs> Correct. Welcome, Dan. Um, Tim Riggs, he's a small town doctor in Prince Edward Island, Canada. And um, basically he is a Boy Scout troop leader. Um, At the end of the summer, the group goes on an annual camping trip to the uninhabited and tiny Falstaff Island, which is just off the coast. Um, The troop consists of four, or I'm sorry, five, 14-year-old boys, the alpha male leader, Kent, who's a brutish jock, classic. Um, Then there's Shelly, a creepy, quiet loner whose interests are secretly touching girls' hair, being hidden, and unnoticed torturing animals. Um, Ephraim, is it Ephraim? Ephraim, that's what I said. I feel like my brain doesn't like pronounce names when I'm reading like, in my head. Same. Like, I was going to say yeah. Hermione. You know, like, I, just... I did not read what? Hermione when I read Harry Potter. That was Wait, no. Those, no, no way. Those who Hermione. audiobooked it, what did they say? The audiobook said Ephraim. Ephraim. Okay. Oh, see, I said Ephraim. Okay. <laughs> yeah, see, it's, yeah. Okay. Ephraim, Ephraim and Max are best friends, but they're polar opposites of each other. Ephraim is the angsty, short-tempered, son of an imprisoned thief, while Max is a gentle and calm soul who tries to keep the peace. And of course, the final member is Newt, who mm-hmm. is a, a oversensitive nerd who is mocked and bullied constantly by the others. Don't he forget, basically... he's, obese. he's obese. He's obese. They say it every yeah. five fucking seconds. <laughs> Correct. Um, so during the first night's campfire, the group encounters a skeletally ga- gaunt clearly ill man who's complaining of increasing hunger. Dr. Riggs welcomes him to their camp, balancing concerns about safety with his physician's oath to heal, the doctor ties hungry man down and tries to feed him. The best of both worlds. After scarfing down an extraordinary amount of food, the man is still close to death and complaining of horrible stomach pain. And Despite extremely primitive conditions, Dr. Riggs decides that the only thing to do is an exploratory surgery with Kent as an assistant. I thought it is was it Max. Kent? It's Max. This is wrong. Wow. <laughs> Gabby ate him up. <laughs> I went, Hold yeah, up. It is Max. It's not Kent. Because Max's mm-hmm. dad does taxidermy. And that yeah. was his reasoning. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously this is when things go awry. Um, as soon as the man's stomach is opened, um, a tapeworm, a horrifying t- experimental tapeworm bursts out of Hungry Man's chest and immediately infects Dr. Riggs and eventually Kent. And the Hungry Man was this guy who, I don't even think we need to know his name. It's, his name's Tom Paget, but it doesn't really matter. Basically, he was going under um, experimental scientific <laughs> experiments at the hands of this guy, Dr. Clive Ed. Edgerton, Edgerton, a sociopathic geneticist who was trying to create a tapeworm for diets, um, but on the side, 
just as a little side project. He was also de developing another tapeworm for um, the military, which could be used as a bioweapon. Um, Is that and... what was going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought that they just <laughs> took it. I didn't. I thought that, I thought that he was making it to make money, and then they just took the worm and was like, "Actually, we're going to use this as bio warfare." No, well, like, in all even those, more money by selling it to them. Yeah, in all those like interviews with like the assistant, they were like, "Did you know he was working with all oh, of these government agencies?" Right. Oh, I I mixed that as that being like he was the, like no the actual lead scientist. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, so these worms evolved, basically. This guy, he escaped from Dr. Edgerton. Edgerton that's going to trip me up every time. He escaped Dr. from Dr. Edgerton's um, facility and ended up on Falstaff Island um, with the, the troop. And basically, as this happens on the other side of the island, back on the mainland, um, the army is starting to blockade the island, quarantining the town, um, the boys can't come back. Um, and also sort of mentioned that the other guy, the hungry man did also destroy their radio. So they can't contact them. Anymore. So they're just, they don't know what's going on. Um, the, the parasite basically just feeds off of people's bodies at an alarming rate. It's like they just start losing everything on their body. Um, and they, but they think that they're feeling good and awesome, which we'll get into later. But um, Dr. Riggs is killed by a falling tree. So the, the, they lock him up in a, um, like a cabinet because he's infected. And then a tree falls on the cabin and kills him anyway. Um, Kent is sick. Shelly ends up stalking and killing Kent um, because he's a psychopath. Um and basically <laughs> i don't know why i'm laughing this part's so awful max and <laughs> new after oh, i'm skipping things but i'm just trying to give a brief max and new come across a turtle they're really hungry oh. they're just at this point they're starving they don't know what's going on their friends are getting sick oh my um, god yeah so bad. So, so they bad. I know Harry spend a few notes but that was one of them yeah, they the turtle. <laughs> yeah, they spend yeah. a very long time trying to kill it. This is Max and Newt, I believe. Um, and they were so disturbed by they did by what they had done that they were unable to even eat the animal, and they just buried it. Uh, meanwhile, Shelley's off on his own. He's stalking the remaining boys. Kills Ephraim. We'll get into that. That's fucking crazy. Um. But then Shelly himself gets infected. <laughs> um, yes, he does. After a lot else happens, uh, the army eventually sends, or they get on a boat and they head out to sea. Um, they they fix the boat after battling Shelly, who becomes like this worm thing, but also the worm's daddy. He has worm babies. It's cute. Um, it's cute. You know, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Um, so he dies, and then it's just Newt and Max. And by this point, Newt is showing signs that he's sick. They um, basically mm -hmm. drive the boat out. They get stopped by the military boats. And um, Newt says, we're fine. I'm just very, very hungry. And as soon as he says that, he is immediately shot. Um, so Max is the lone survivor. After they name napalm the island, they completely destroy everything and like bleach the ocean or something even worse than that. Um, Max is quarantined for several months, testing medical checks, and he's finally declared healthy and uninfected. And basically, I don't know. It kind of ends on this interesting note where it basically like the last line is Max saying. He's back on the island visiting it. It's all charred and burnt to shit. And he's sitting there and it says that he ha he's he's starting to feel a hunger after months of medical tests where he was declared uninfected. And that's how the story ends. I have a lot to say about the ending. <laughs> thank you, Brody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, thank you, Brody. I mean, 
let's dive right on in. So, Dan, usually we like just talk any points, any parts you like stuck out, any characters, any any anything really. We'll say final ratings and final reviews or whatever, like towards the end. Um, but I kind of just want to get us started off. I personally went in with no context for the book. I knew obviously it was like Boy Scout camping trip gone wrong, or at least that is how it was like pitched to me. Um, and I did not. <laughs> I did not expect it to go the way that it did. So I kind of wanted to ask, like, what was everyone's thought going in and how did you like react to where the plot went? I have thoughts. So I went to Barnes and Noble, saw it in person. I said, oh, this is ugly. It's giving scary. Um, I don't know if I like it. And then I was like, OK, Boy Scouts, because I used to do Boy Scouts and I did it for months and months. And they were like, if you want to keep this up, you got to go camping with us. And I was like, I'm out and I quit. So this, <laughs> confirmed, this confirmed my fear that I should not have gone. And I was right for that because, yeah, no. Congratulations, you're a survivor. Right. Um. No, I also didn't really know much about this book either. I did, I did Girl Scouts for a couple of years. I was a superior daisy or a, a brownie. I stopped at the yes. brownie. Yes. Oh, What's the, the first level? <laughs> oh, I think it's Daisy Brown. Oh, okay. I'm dead. Um, I did not expect it to be like this. I didn't like. Does like it's a sci-fi like does this like kind of count as like loki sci-fi um, it kind of reminds me of the thing because i'm yeah. i'm getting that we'll talk and, about I, that. and i kind of like it so i i think i liked it like halfway through the first half ah. i think was a little mm. slow for me um i honestly could have used without like the backstory of the um the scoutmaster it was just it, it took me a minute to like it took me basically until like halfway through part two to be like I'm excited for the next chapter okay. um, yeah it was very I, long it was long um I audiobooked it, it as 55. well and um there were parts that the way the author or the way the, the, way the narrator like explained Ugh. or um read the chimpanzee Mm -hmm. um, moment um it was actually very scary it was very especially like when oh yeah it was crazy so I loved I liked that part it spooked me it grossed me out I like to be grossed out so yeah I I went into it not knowing and I left happy I think okay yeah I I knew this is obviously the book club that we're in that was going to be some sort of horror uh, but I didn't know anything going in. And I just, I do want to say that chimpanzee scene. I I told SJ as soon as I got home, because I was coming home from work, listening to it on the train. And it was like a crowded train. So there was like a lot of people. And I was just standing in the uh, middle, holding the pole. And I'm listening to this and my, I can't hold my face. I am like, <laughs> like <laughs> gagging and this old lady is like sitting there watching me the whole time and I have to go like this I'm like don't look at me I deposit I couldn't listen to it. I had to walk I walked home and I went SJ I couldn't even finish it and I had to like oh listen to it by myself I had to take a few minutes afterwards because it was horrible can we give yeah. some context for the scene that you're describing yeah um the chimpanzee can, can someone else do it because I don't I mean, I have the book I in front of can, me. I don't know if I can find it specifically. Slash, I don't really want to. It's basically to like it. it's the the person who's narrating is um kind of like taking a video and just saying, mm -hmm. "Oh, so this is what's happening." Like you know, we're giving. He's like the, a he's a part of the experiment. Seems like they're yeah. experimenting the tapeworm with animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's the chimpanzee, and they're just watching it, and they go like timestamp wise um they go through essentially what was it like five hours 18 minutes or something mm -hmm. like that yeah and where you saw the entire progression on how this tapeworm affected this monk this uh chimpanzee and, and it gets brutal when i tell you graphic. rent yeah. was due for that voice actor <laughs> oh, oh my god acting yeah. oh no, my it, god yeah he was like, it was oh, oh my god <laughs> he was like yeah it was, it was so, so well nice. done no, it was very good it was like so i felt done. the yeah. terror 
I did the whole book in tandem. So listening to the audio while physically reading along. And for that part, I put down the book and just listened. And holy shit, that man was acting. Yeah, it was crazy. It was scary. It was scary. I was so well usually written, on but... two, like two times speed, but I, I went back to regular and I was like, I have to listen to this the way it was intended. Yeah, that was a standout scene for sure. So awful. sad. Oh so my God, sad. so sad. No, awful, awful. There was a, there was, there might have been a little too much animal. Yes, we'll me. get into that. Yeah, There's I think that the chimp, way. the chimp scene I read, I didn't listen to it. I read it. Like, um, I I want to go back and listen to it now that you guys talked about that. But I read that on my lunch break. <laughs> 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 so I literally no. read that scene and then I went back to work with the kids and I was like, this is just weird. <laughs> with the kids. Well, I mean, going on with just the scenes in general and like what stood out. Um, I think after every animal cruelty scene, I went to SJ and I like almost cried. Um just a, lot. just a small one even just like uh when Shelly was uh messing with the crawfish and like plucking out like squishing its eyes and like mm-hmm. that was oh I had to stop there um oh my god the cat scene and he's like oh R.I.P. Trixie, Trixie. <laughs> yeah I had to hug oh, Gigi that afterwards so that, that is sad, such a yeah. clear sign of a like childhood yeah. as childhood like psychotic like so mm-hmm. yeah yeah, they, um, animal cruelty, bedwetting, and um, oh, Shelly, what is it? Animal cruelty, bedwetting, setting fires, pyromania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Shelly was just such an interesting character to me because he was so awful, you hated him so much, but like you wanted to keep seeing what he was gonna kid, do. But he's a kid, so it's also like there's like this element of just how little he is and just how like immature and it's like his like surroundings his like childhood really fucking it failed him and kind of he didn't rem- get any help it reminds me of um if you ever hear about like there's uh this one kid that like found he was angry at his parents and he found his dad's gun and he shot them and he was like because he plays like um all those video games he was like i i didn't realize that they were gonna die and never yeah. come back he's like you're just you're he didn't have that understanding of like and like to be fair Shelly is way beyond that age he is what what are they in high school they're like they're 14 14. Oh, yeah. 14 they're in high school which i didn't realize That's freshman year i thought they were older i was getting like middle they're like 16 vibe, i was definitely getting middle school yeah mm. either way yeah. like who knows 14 honestly, that is definitely an age where i mean middle school i guess is a little bit more iffy but like if they are 14 like that is you you know by now the consequences of your actions to a certain degree i guess um at least of torturing things you should know at this point yeah uh, no shelly yeah. made a lot of conscious thought there and was a lot of he yeah there was a lot of just like he he, he justifies he, he was justifies fun. It. absolutely yeah. it was fun for him it yeah. was a game i'm trying to find i definitely have a tab yeah here. he talks about it he's just like i like they they're just meat sacks all of them and, and he's also like they think i'm dumb and like I like that, yeah. I can just do whatever I want. Yeah. But yeah, he yeah. basically says he has no remorse because he doesn't see, he doesn't see animals as people for sure. Like he just sees them as vessels, and he sees people not as people. Yeah, it says like yeah. he was excited to experiment when they were like, when he was realizing the situation that they were yeah. in. Also, no i i if anything i would think i thought he was like the oldest out of all of them i thought mm. he was incredibly i thought his his mind the way he planned things the way he had everything like he was he was kind of he was smart he's a bright kid like he's a very bright yeah. but also very ill um i, I mean think the whole scene was, with him and ephraim yeah oh, my cat's yelling at me hold on <laughs> But to keep going with the animal cruelty, let's see how many else. Um, the turtle scene. The turtle. The turtle scene was so brutal. That was fucking rough. But also, <laughs> has um, any? Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say Dolores Claiborne. Gabby, I literally was supposed to say that. Get out of my head. Has anyone here read Dolores Claiborne, Stephen King? Nope. No, no, but it's on my list. This oh is a God. non-Stephen King. I'll get King there eventually. Podcast. I know. Spoilers. I know. Non-Stephen King, but that scene was so relevant to Dolores Claiborne it was 
crazy. Like, why wouldn't that turtle just fucking die? Right. <laughs> it went on forever. No, literally. It went on forever. Yeah. Doesn't it know by now to die? <laughs> right. Oh my God. It was so sad. I think it was such an important scene because it really showed like the humanity in these boys, right? Yeah. And it further showed how fucked up Shelly was. Mm, because these boys mm-hmm. made a conscious thought, Max and um who was also there with him? Uh, Newton, it was Max Newton. Newton, yeah. It like made this survival instinct, right? Like we need food. There's a food source. There's a purpose a for the killing. Also, like wasn't a great choice, but whatever. And how they're suffering and like feeling all this remorse and feeling all this empathy. And then we like flip to the next chapter and Shelly is just like fucking everything up without a care in the world. I want to add that because I I remember when I was the only one to read it, um, Stephen texted me like, before we all read it, like, apparently there's a lot of animal cruelty. And I said, it's weird animals, like turtles and shit. And so I think that it's not like a dog where like, I'm reading it and sympathizing with like my dog who's like an extension of my family. It's like a turtle. Like how often am I like cuddling a turtle, you know? Also, it was just, (laughs) (laughs) so I just felt it was weird. Yeah, Yeah. I did. I I did have a pet tortoise for a summer, so. You did? It hit hit hard for you, buddy. I felt it. Oh, I I mean, just all of it. I love cats. Right, like if it was a dog scene. Yeah, I'm glad. Was there a dog scene? No. No, no dogs, but Trixie the cat had to go. Trixie. Yeah, Trixie the cat. Trixie. Yeah, that was a really hard one because of the drowning and then drowning again. And like, damn. Yeah. Yo, come yeah. on. Yeah. Animals just not dying. Yeah. No animals died. In this. Well, because well, it was a game for Shelly. He yeah. liked to draw it out. He yeah. And again, it. like the, the, uh, the, the juxtaposition between the turtle not dying and them being like, oh, God, like, please just let it end versus Shelly not being able to kill Trixie yes. enough and being excited that yes. it's still trying to. It's a clear difference yep. in intention. Yeah. That's a great mm-hmm. point. I love that. Um, we were kind of talking about it a little bit before, but this book incorporated like a lot of mixed media. How did you guys feel about that? <clears throat> Meaning thinking. like reading like every couple of chapters, you're following the boys and their storyline. And then like, you'll get like an interview with one of like the scientists or you'll get like the case study notes from like the experiments they were doing. How did you feel like how that broke up the story? I liked it um, just because I feel like the mixed media like lets it kind of give you that outside information like not in such a detailed way like I think that there was a lot of there was definitely some scenes with a lot of detail I love like world building so I'm cool with that but um any the um bits and pieces that they would put in like between chapters was just like just enough information to like get you up to speed and also too it was kind of like as the boys still don't really know anything, but as you're getting their story, you as the reader are starting to understand what they're like actually going, like what they're facing, basically. So for that reason, I enjoyed it. I think it could have been interesting to only hear from the boys, at least for a little bit, so that it was like we're trapped with them in the woods and then learn more toward the end. But it was interesting that like we knew more than they did. Yeah, it was. I guess I didn't realize that it was never in the point of view of the boys. It was either a narrator or the interviewee or mm-hmm. Shelly. Shelly. It was the point of view of Shelly. I think it was all third person narrative. I don't think it was ever. From oh, Shelley's oh, like, POV. oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, I got you, I got you, never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like we yeah. had, we had, we had chapters where we like focused in on. Right, mm-hmm. right. Like, I don't know why right. that I thought that it was like the point of view of Shelly I thought he was saying like I but I don't think he was that would have been that would have been cool I agree with that Dan could have done that yeah, in the beginning think... and completely skipped that master but I also I'm I'm understanding hey, why he needed to I love be scout there. master I think he was gay <laughs> They like alluded you to him being so? gay, and I loved it. They really? said yeah. like he had no family. Everyone in like town like would make fun of him because he was a single guy. He was a teacher. Like he had no family, and I think they like called him like a queer or something. Like probably as like a slur, but like he was probably was. Mm-hmm. And that made me sad. And like that whole 
him having to choose, I think it's like right as his final moments, he's already locked in the closet. And he was like, I could have chose not to let this guy into the camp, but sometimes you have to like choose the well-being of the whole group or the well-being of like one singular person. And that made me like feel sad. Or even like Mm. leaving him out is similar to what he experienced. Like he was like, I've been left out, so I need to take him in and care for him instead of just like being selfish and focusing Ooh, on very us. queer coded yeah mm, because wow. that was sad he's like i could have avoided all this he was like i was in charge of protecting the boys and i made the conscious decision to let this guy in because yeah. i thought i could help him but like at what cost and that i was like oh damn and then he died like a page later <laughs> no that was so, so bad the imagery yeah. of his death and the tree on him and just like his skull bashed open and like that was rough what? too Sorry. Was it what Shelly that said he looks like the Wicked Witch? Yeah, I think I think it was Shelly. Oh, with her it. his legs, his legs out. No. Yeah, <laughs> his uh, his what's it called? Rose. One like shoe, like sh- um, yeah. shot up. Yep. Do you know what really broke me? It's the scene fucking back to Shelly where um the Scoutmaster is like screaming because they're blocking the door. And then he's like, oh, at least I have a little bit of light from under the door. And then Shelly goes and tapes over <laughs> the bottom of the door. And the Scoutmaster's like, please, no, like, please, like, let me just have a little light. And Shelly's like, uh, oh, can't risk it. <laughs> like, no way. That made me so sad. I really, I, I felt connected to the Scoutmaster. I was sad to see him go. Yeah. I, yeah, no, I, I liked his character. I wish he was in it, like, more. Be like because we did get such an extensive background on him but i think it like i think just like with like y'all discussing it like it it does um make a lot of his actions make more sense if you really think about it yeah yeah i didn't yeah. realize he was queer coded makes me sad oh i picked up on it right away because because um Rip. But one thing I wanted to point out, we were talking about the mixed media and Dan brought up a good point about like, I wish we didn't have no, I wish we didn't know so much information as early on as we did. And I agree with that because we get pretty early on, maybe like halfway through, it's an interview with like some military guy. I don't fucking know his name, but he was basically like the orders were that nothing was coming off the island. Nothing was going to the island. Anything coming off the island like was getting shot and killed. So right there, I was like, okay, so no one's surviving the story. Like immediately I was like, okay, so they're all going to die. Even if someone gets a boat going, they're going to get shot and killed. Cool. Way to spoil the whole ending. Little do I know that Max survives. Yeah. What? Yeah. I have a gripe about that that ending because of it. So that was actually more towards the end. That was like chapter like 39, 40 ish. So it was more towards the end when he says like, I will not kill or every everything that enters and exits has to die and the thing is it's not even just like a throw away sort of conversation he extensively talks about it. he is like well when you think about like epidemics like either like everyone on the outside is always like oh how are they gonna let 44 people die and let them be isolated and starve and like know that they're suffering and not do anything about it he's like there has to be someone that draws that hard line because either 44 people could have died or 44 million people could have died so he's like so anything like we have snipers on the island no bird comes through that lands there we um dump loads of poison into the waters which environmentalists don't like but we do what we have to do and he's like nothing will leave this island so and I told Eshe I was like yeah so like I'm like reading it towards the end and I was like like I know they're all gonna die because he said that and so for Mm -hmm. that fucking ending to happen i was so pissed off i was like okay so so your word means nothing so you being the high all admiral or whatever like you still let this little boy go like i was so waiting for him to get shot i was i was ready i I mourned Mm -hmm. his death already it was fine i got over it i went through the five cycles of grief (laughs) five (laughs) stages of grief damn he's alive and he was alive (sighs) just to go back fucker also i do want to say um i said this to sj but the final girl support group if you ever read that book um i hated that book hated it and the last like two chapters of the troop did a better like storytelling of what it's like to actually survive a horrific event and being like a final girl (laughs) um better than that book did (laughs) yeah like 
Uh, and just for him to go back, I was, yeah. Yeah. So you were praying on a child's death. Oh, yeah. hundred (laughs) percent. Glad to hear it from a nurse. (laughs) (laughs) I was just being realistic. True. (laughs) Yeah, but I hated that ending. Pissed me off. Yeah, I mean, do y'all think he's sick or what? <laughs> Does he I have the, the, I don't in know. the head? I think the, the land. Worm? I think the land is the draw. So he visits the land, and that's the well, vibes. Yeah. It's just like he, all of his thoughts when he gets off the island are about the friends that he like. He was. He even said he was like, I had friends before going on the trip, but now. They, the ones that I left on the island are the only ones I think about. He's like, my whole life I left on the island. Mm-hmm. So it's like survivor's guilt and for sure. Survivor's guilt. Yeah. And he's been isolated from everything. Like, he did not go back to a normal life, especially because yeah, they say that like the Chip and Z video came out. So they were like, fuck, that's what this kid was around. Yeah. Teachers would Wait. send him home with paper packets and he would have to email answers back because they were like, we're not touching the fucking paper he touches. Yeah. I just noticed that I think it was all metaphorical for trauma like could it be that he was traumatized by it and that's why he's thinking about the friends or is it the draw of the land pulling him back like i just said like is it this sci-fi thing that steph is essentially saying or is it just a metaphor for mental illness mm. Mm. is it bunny <laughs> can't talk about bunny um, the age-old question <laughs> no, no i, I mean th- i guess it I... could be both sorry go ahead steph I was just gonna say I think I took it like somewhat literally I really thought there was like this worm and or this tapeworm and it's white and it's very the thing or the fly right oh well, the fly see a uh, scene where like she like gives birth to like the fly disgusting gave me that vibe um oh, great movie great Brody's movie. never seen the thing I've never seen the thing but I texted I've Brody immediately after like the first worm out of the stomach scene, I texted Brody immediately. I was like, oh my God, this book is like the thing. And Brody's like, I've never seen that. And no. that blew my mind. Todd, you've never seen I the know. thing. Damn, Brody. I know. I'm trying now to watch the movie and you'll really get the truth. It'll put everything in perspective. <laughs> um, speaking of that scene though, <laughs> really quick thought. What did you all, how did you all react to the scene where Shelly is feeding the worm that crawled out of the guy <laughs> to Kent? <laughs> That was crazy. Oh my god. That was crazy. Yeah, so Ken's locked in the basement, right? Ken's locked in the basement. He's begging for food. Yeah. And Shelly's like, sure, buddy, old pal. I gotcha. And he like, just dirt or like something (laughs) random. He's like, (laughs) maybe. He goes, yeah, they just just dropped a supply crate. Yeah, oh, that was oh, so Oh my god, god. that was me. Hey, uh, cheeseburgers. I'm telling you, was... those are the scenes where I'm like, I fucking hate Shelly, but like, what is this sick fuck gonna do next? Like, I need to know. <laughs> because it was like, yeah, he's like, because he, he goes upstairs and he sees the like dead worm carcass and he's like, you know, he's like, I have the opportunity to do something really fucking funny right now. <laughs> <laughs> and he did. And it's like yeah. just pure self entertainment. And I was like, this sick fuck. That was crazy. That was crazy. Yeah. Um, but continuing on the Shelly gross out train, can we please, please, please talk about the Ephraim scene over uh, the walkie talkies? Yes. So fucked up. Someone, no, you guys know what scene I'm referring to? I, I might need a reminder. Do you want to do it? So, I'm talking about the scene where Kent, or I'm sorry, not Kent, um, Ephraim is out in the woods somewhere. And he thinks he's he has the worm, or he might even, who knows. And Shelly comes on the walkie-talkie, and he's like, kind of like fucking with him a little bit. He's like, you see them, right? Like, he's like, oh, cut them yeah. out. Yes, Ephraim's yes, by yes. himself, by the way. Yeah. He yeah. decides to stay behind he's while all, um, yes. yeah. New okay. and yep. Max go on. He's I did really just, freaking out. Okay, yeah. And that it was, just gets, like, progressively uh, worse. He's like, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's, there's worms, for sure. Like, oh, you saw it, right? And just, yeah. like, convinces him to just carve out out of him and it's it was so bad yeah yeah and it says he's he finally saw one in his ankle yeah he he saw one, right? maybe, and he maybe. Pick it out. Yeah. which yeah. did you guys look at your ankles afterwards and see <laughs> the yes. pulse yeah yeah 
ugh, yeah. And then it ultimately leads to him like burning himself a lot. Yeah. And that was also fucked because the, yeah. the thing is he survived all those cuts. Like he mm-hmm. survived basically like a thousand cuts. Like it, that's torture. And he did it to himself and he, that's a thousand cuts. it gets like mind fucked too. So they take him back to the cabin and they go and leave him for a second. And, um, Shelly takes that opportunity to talk to him and be like, Hey buddy, like, no, yeah, I believe you. Like I can get this out for you. And, um, starts cutting him thinks about like scalping him at some point yeah. he like think about how like cool that would look and how satisfying yeah. and how much of a thrill i would get from it um but then ultimately it's just like you know the only way for you to really be free of these worms is to purify yourself with fire so he gets the gasoline pours it on himself and burns him the fuck up man goes in flames max and um newt come running back and there's a point they were like it was comical but they thought to scream like stop drop and roll <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, but what, what good would that do and just the yeah. scene of yeah. him opening up of them opening up the sleeping bag and just seeing like he's in like the fetal position his knees his kneecaps are welded to his forehead mm-hmm. like they can't like his clothes are completely disintegrated his face is unrecognizable like it is sad it is so sad yeah it was tough and Sometimes. he begged for it he said thank you to shelly he was like thank you for believing yeah. in me he begged for it that was like stockholm syndrome type stockholm syndrome yeah yeah sure yeah mind games i feel like sometimes the book was like the imagery was almost too much for my brain to completely see everything that was happening Mm. I don't know if anybody else felt the same way so I feel like there are there like I'm really glad that you guys are explaining it in some like in bigger in like nicer detail because Mm -hmm. I don't like I just there was some it was like too much sometimes I was like I literally don't even know half those words like I that's your know. mind protecting you <laughs> <laughs> literally so yeah and that's probably why like we'll get to my ratings but mm. that's probably why it's not higher than what i gave it because fair, i just fair. it was like it was i was it just went over my head a lot as, yeah. as a lot of the imagery did and i, I also, don't read a yeah. lot of sci-fi either mm. so there it's just, there was one piece of imagery that actually the reason why I liked this book so much was I actually got scared from it. So, mm-hmm. and it doesn't really happen a lot anymore. Um, but it was, there was a few, it was, it happened a few times, but it was like when it would describe the worm, like growing up the person's like spinal cord, mm-hmm. and like wrapping itself around and that people could see it like through their skin. Like that shit really scared me. So that piece of imagery I really enjoyed um and just like trying to imagine Shelly's final form um yeah must have been Mm. something horrific guys there's like there's art there's like fan art (gasps) of the truth and it's really cool like if you just google image fan art the troop nick cutter you'll find some shit and it's creepy which (laughs) i like sometimes like i need that sometimes yeah i do too yeah Yeah, i'm doing it right now um <clears throat> for the writing style i will say it was very detailed um i think nick cutter kind of has a reputation for his body horror he has a couple books out and the, the one thing i hear about nick cutter is like body horror galore um which i think we definitely saw a lot of in here and i know we're anti stephen king on this podcast but <laughs> it was giving me a lot of stephen king i'm sure brody is and gabby a little bit is really the only person who can relate to that but very Stephen King type of writing I think also with like the very stupid depiction of Newt just being overweight I was mm-hmm. just like is this Stephen King is this a pseudonym for Stephen King because this <laughs> just harping so on Stephen that one King thing quoted. yeah over and over again uh yeah yeah just like yeah every well, death scene everything was just so yeah. fleshed out can we talk yeah. more about then, Newt <laughs> oh sorry if you want to yeah. keep going on that oh no I was, protect I was Newt at all s- costs yeah true i was just gonna say real quick that the um the world building aspect of this book was like that's i was getting a lot of stephen king because it was like yeah we got all that information on 
the um all that i'm sorry all that information on the troop master and then he dies very shortly so yeah, like, that's very such a Stephen Stephen King. King. <laughs> yeah. he went out for with yeah. the lasagna it was never seen again yeah. <laughs> makes you fall in love with the character and then just fucking uh, rips your heart out yeah yeah it's a first-hand assault um, um yeah what do you want to talk about newt gabby new um yeah. What a fucking character. He broke my heart in so many different ways. Um, WW AMD. Yeah. yeah. It was, uh, oh it my was God, so I forgot. Sad. That. Yeah. Um, that was sad. Just that gave him... me cyberbully Emily Oppen No. Line. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> she could never get the cap off. <laughs> Does she kill herself in that movie? No, she just struggles to open the pill Guys, bottle, and that's her attempt. I can't the cap off. She never takes a single pill. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, back on track. Sorry, Gabby. <laughs> what were you uh, saying? No, it just like very. So him putting his himself on um on the internet with you know a different face under like catfishing basically um because he understood that people were judging him by his looks and that um people were wouldn't get to know the real him because of that and it sounds like you know they come from like a small town so it's kind of like you know once you have a label on yourself it is very hard to take yourself out of that so very much understanding where he's coming from in that kind of sentiment. Um, but in the end, when it's really just Max and Newt, because this, this is after a frame dies, and Max looks at him and goes, you know, like, I thought that if anyone was going to survive this, it might have been Kent. Like, I never would have thought that Newt would have. But they're like, but at the same time, Newt's the only person who logically could have survived this. Like, he is the most knowledgeable He's already been through the ringer every day of his life, like before we even got on this island, like he has been through hardship. So it makes sense that he's the one who survives. And even when they go into the cave and they have that kind of battle with Shelly, um, when Newt gets infected and he goes back outside, when he's in his like starting to get into a sick mindset, he still thinks like, you know, WWAMD, like he's still in that idea that he has to think about himself as, himself as someone else in order to get the courage to do what he actually wants to do. And it's just, it's so sad. Drag. No, literally, literally. Should have just done that. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> me and Gabby keep making fun of it, but that scene where, um, like, Newt gets infected and <laughs> he tells, <laughs> we can make it fun of it, but it was really sad. When, um, no, Max I know exactly is, what you're he's talking like, about. He's like, Max, really I'm a hungry. Hungrier. And Max like, I'm hungry too. And he's like, no, Max, I'm hungrier than you. It, that broke that my heart was too. sad. No, that I mean, was Gabby really keep sad. making fun of it, but it was really sad. <laughs> no, yeah. I agree. That broke my heart. Yeah. Yeah, knew it was, uh, he was just such a lonely but gentle boy. Yeah. And yeah, it was a really... He was a really sad character. I was really rooting for him. Totally. I, I pictured um the kid from It. Mm -hmm. uh, very oh, it vibes. Uh, very, totally vibes. Very him. Yeah. Stephen King. And the cutter really <laughs> told inspiration. He told references. One of the questions I wrote that Seth just said she pictured. I want to know when you guys read, especially like detailed horror like this, is it a full movie in your head? Is it some people see it from their point of view? Are you imagining things? Because to me, it's just words. So that's why a lot of the detail was like droning on for me. And I was like, okay, speed it up. I see it like, that's a really good question. Um, I feel like I, when I'm reading, I'm seeing it very cinematically. So it's like a movie basically. Interesting. I don't know yeah, well. I paint a pretty clear picture in my head, especially for horror, especially horror like this, like body horror. 
just because it's tangible like <clears throat> I, I could picture what's going on nothing that happened in this book was like otherworldly where I really ah. had to imagine it you know what I mean like everything felt very rooted in our reality so this was pretty easy for me to like picture I also just read words um I don't <laughs> picture things in my head um but I do feel things that's emotionally and physically <laughs> but like so like Shelly when he was like squishing the eyeballs from the crawfish like I felt that between my oh, fingers okay. and like when they talk about when he comes out in his final form and in like his arms and legs are nothing but skin and bone like I felt that and I was like like it <laughs> yeah so so when Ephraim was cutting himself up I was I was gagging <laughs> everywhere so it sounds like you put yourself there. Yeah, yeah that's what yeah. I was going to say. Because I could just picture those scenes, but in the background, you're just standing there like... <laughs> 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 having like a real reaction. No, fully. <laughs> no, yeah, basically. <laughs> On the train. <laughs> right. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. It's rough. <laughs> Steph, what about you? Um, I think sometimes it's like snapshots. For me like I get like little glimpses into and I think I am in there I think I see a point like I'm not part of the story but like I'm watching the story mm. right like I'm you're the camera it. yeah but it's definitely not I don't it doesn't like the minute I start reading I picture everything I'm seeing in every way especially like I read a lot of nonfiction as well like memoirs so it's like I put myself like I try to relate into things I already like have in my head mm. to, so I can make it as a reference I can mm. use it as a reference for when I read memoir mm -hmm. does that and make any sense like yeah. that's why you said the kid from it like you're kind of fan casting Ooh, <laughs> yeah. yeah a little bit that's yeah cool I really think this could have been this could be a good movie Oh yeah, Netflix. Would, I would, I, it up. I would love to see this as a movie because I would. I want to see what the author was like wants me to envision. Like right. my imagination, like yeah. just isn't that advanced. <laughs> I guess it, like, <laughs> exactly. That's how I felt. Yeah. Like we kind of said the thing earlier, but also now that you're saying like it could be a movie, like I could also see like Yellow Jackets kind of. Um, it's like, you know, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. That's yeah, what I was gonna say. I yeah. Yellow Jackets vibes for sure. That's and what I, think I was. They, getting. I could do definitely something like that, where it's just like you know, you see the isolated group. I mean, I guess everyone dies except for Max. We don't know if he does, so you don't really get that before and after kind of situation. But yeah, gives me those vibes. Well, it's just like kids are stranded and have to do like fucked up adult shit yeah. to survive in the woods. Yeah, uh -huh. I could see a season. Yeah, definitely. I would love to see Shelly before, final but I was I was listening, and if you ever have the pleasure of reading next to Gabby, it is an experience. <laughs> Gabby yeah. is so reactive, <laughs> <laughs> similar to like most things, but like especially when she's reading, it's just a lot of like, oh my god, oh my, no, 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 and I'm like, uh, this is all in your head. No, <laughs> like, just stop reading it. Like Gabby is so expressive when she reads; it's crazy, cr crazy. She gets in I'm it. Fully silent. I love she that. does. No, Gabby just <laughs> screams. Out I buy into everything. <laughs> Listen, if you're not putting 100% into it, I don't want to hear it. That's with everything. That's why Horror Nights, no, so watch should. out. <laughs> oh, we saw, Gab. Oh, we saw. Yeah, that's a good part of Horror Nights. That's always fun. Okay, let's get into final ratings and final thoughts because yeah. we are at an hour. Um, who wants to start us off? Let's just go through with a rating uh, number out of five first, and then we will... We'll go around round robin sharing our rating and then we'll ask for explanation why that rating is. I, um, I don't want to start. As our, new, mm. as our new member, Dan should go yes. first. Okay. You knew I was prepared because I have my good reads. Oh, you can't see it at all. <laughs> um, I put a four out of five. <laughs> I gave it a four star. Ah. Yes, because I'm very picky with my five stars. Like it has to be like, oh, like it was Jeanette McCurdy's book. Like it has to be like, I can recommend it to everyone. Mm. So a four is pretty good for me. Okay, okay. And I thought it was very detailed in a way of where it needs to be for horror. And I haven't read something like this before. So it was very interesting and I have nothing to compare it to. So I gave it a four. 
I said three out of five because I could not get over emotionally, I guess, the, like, I understand <laughs> the reasoning for the animal cruelty scenes, but for me, it was just a tad bit too much. Mm. Um, And I don't think my heart could morally give it more than a three. Uh, also, the ending. I might have given it a 3.5, <laughs> but that ending, no. Right. It just pissed me off too much. So, a three. I also gave it a four out of five. Um, I feel that on the animal cruelty. I also, I realized that this is not real. Like, I just didn't <laughs> like imagining it. I just really didn't like imagining it. So I just like, that just won't, wasn't really like what I was looking forward to like reading about. So that knocks it down a little bit. And then another reason why it's not a five is I really did have some hard times with like really understanding everything that was happening in the book. And I, I feel like, um, but I still really liked how it like gross and gory and um I I guess yeah I also really have never read anything like this and it's like kind of opened me up to like maybe looking into more of like this genre of horror a little bit not so much like spooky but like gross Ooh, um I gave it a five I gave it a five (laughs) your smile is Uh, "Mm." (laughs) very easy to please unlike Dan I'm really loose about my fives um I... <laughs> he gets around <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah no i really enjoyed it i think mostly what led me there was the just like how um disturbed and unwell and scared it actually made me feel which mm-hmm. you know after watching a lot of horror movies and reading a lot of horror books you kind of get desensitized to a lot. So um, I was just happy to find something that actually pushed me there again. Um, and You're broken. <laughs> if this is what it takes to make you feel, you're broken. I know, I feel that. I feel <laughs> that too, feel. though, Brody. Me yeah, too. I, don't, no, I, feel the only thing I, I haven't felt anything in years. <laughs> oh my God. And you know what, before I start my reading, there was a quote that I wanted to share um, I'm not going to find it now, but I absolutely tabbed it. Oh, I think I just found it. Nope, I lied. Anyway, I'll paraphrase it. It says, like, it's one of those mixed media you cut to the side of the interview. And it says, like, why were you even developing this in the first place? Like, is there even a market for this? And the guy responds, he says, do you not keep up with the news? Like, people are willingly eating tapeworms all the time for diets. He's like, people will go ahead and purposely taint meat and eat it on purpose to lose weight. And I was like... It's just Eric Roca. Roca. <laughs> like literally, he pulled the reference right out of there. Um, but my rating has been teetering between like a three point five and a four. I was really hoping tonight would like solidify one or the other, and I still think I'm like teetering. So I'm going to say like three point seven five. Is that annoying? Ugh, I'm going to go out. like right in the middle. I really Got liked it. Up. I I I don't know if it deserves a four. Guy but Hill. I don't pick one. I don't know if it deserves a three point five. If okay, if I have to have to have to pick one, I would err on the side of four. But on mm. Goodreads, I will be listing a three point seven five. I think for the reasons that you guys didn't like it, I liked it. The animal horror made me so grossed out and so uncomfortable. And I think the fact that the author was able to do that to me only yeah. speaks to how great of a writer he was. Okay. Even though I hated what he had to say, the fact that I had that reaction to it, I was like, okay. I see what he's doing here. Um, so for that reason, I'm going to give it a four, 3.75. Shelly. It was giving me, <laughs> <laughs> it was giving me uh, the thing vibes. It was giving me, I thought it was going to be like a killer spree killing a Boy Scout troop. And that was not the case at all. I loved the body horror. I loved the different boys and like getting to learn about all of them. I wish Scoutmaster, whatever his name was, lived longer. But yeah, three point seven five. Scoutmaster Tim. Last question I want to leave everyone with. So Nick Cutter has four books currently published. The truth being one of the four. Would we be interested in picking up another Nick Cutter? Yeah. Yeah, I would do it again. Well, that. Any last thoughts? Any last things to say before we put the troop to rest? Thanks for listening to the podcast. 
Uh, check out The Troop by Nick Cutter if you haven't already. If you heard those spoilers and want to check it out still. Uh, at your local bookstore. That's right, your local bookstore. Your local library. Or Libby. Or Libby. Check out the library. See, see if the library's got a, a copy. I, I guarantee you they do. Um, join us next time where we don't know what we will be reading. <laughs> <laughs>